Hey guys, this is what it's like on a Wednesday night. You know how we always get, um, do the devotionals really late Wednesday night because we have Bible study and then we have worship practice. Say hi, babe. Oh, hi everyone. Yeah, so everyone just left. I'm not sure what time it is, but as we're going on, on our way home, we're just going to talk to you guys. Check this out. Look at these lights up here. And, uh. We just got these lights. Are we going to put those up today? No. no. Right? Okay. No. And, I, and I'm and i doing the whole office over, mm. and then I'm redoing the, the well, store. Yeah, see these lights? They light up the whole church, right? But look. See that corner where she's at? There's no lights, and it's really... It looks light now, but it's really dark. Mm -hmm. So we got these. We were going to do them today. It was that too late. And up there, it lets me attach another, like, connect to that. And we're just going to keep the line going and light that up. So We've been here since, we've been in Modesto since 1 o'clock. 1 o'clock. 1.15. Yeah, since 1 o'clock, 1 something. And we haven't even had lunch. We haven't had dinner. We Did we eat lunch? Did we eat breakfast? breakfast? I made you breakfast. I oh, made you yeah, eggs yeah, yeah. this morning. That's I right. made them eggs this morning with That's some right. bacon. bacon with a lot of green pepper, red pepper. Yeah, Johnny, bacon. Yeah, she <laughs> said it. <laughs> but we haven't even had lunch, dinner, nothing. We had some coffee. And I think we did grab a, a one... I think it was like six onion rings in there. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's what we've actually had, and we shared it. So we had six onion six rings. What are you doing in the rings. office? Is it too messy to show? I'm actually redoing the whole office. Let's show them. That way they can show them before and after. Well. Well, not before and after today, but. <laughs> well, I'm still trying to. Um, it kind of looks like a storage right it now. It looks like a storage right now, but. Yeah. This is going to be off. Why is it potato chips? <laughs> oh, because I'm going to put it in the store. <laughs> oh. I'm going to go put it in the children's snacks, snack Wait, shop. Wait, it's blurry. Yeah, it's blurry. Oh, there it is. Yeah. That looks funny. I know. <laughs> so this is... Um, hot Cheetos. Kids love hot Cheetos. We had a bunch of stuff here, but it looked ugly. But we just found that used. Yeah. Oh, so actually, somebody had it for free. For free. I found it. I, I always find free stuff. Oh, okay. you've set it up already? Sort the, of, yeah, yeah. Well, not completely. Okay. See, but, like I found these shells for free. I'm always looking for free stuff too, and I'm gonna stain it and fix it up really nice. Yeah. So, um, this is the office. Well, yeah. it's gonna be an office. Yeah. We have a little desk. It's it's gonna be nice. Yeah. She's, she's gonna do a great. I'm gonna job. restore it and paint it, and it's gonna be all matching in here. But it's a mess right now, guys, because I'm trying to fix everything. Yep. I'm getting there, you guys. So, uh, let's see. And then I want to redo the children's. Ooh. Have we seen our children's? Oh, that's the stage. The screen. This Have is... you seen our conference room? No, I'm going to show them right now. This is where we do worship. She can lead. Watch. Oh, I turned sound off. Never mind. Never mind. But Sharon sings right here. And she runs the, the music here. And um, over here is the conference room. This is where. Uh, oh, this is our conference, conference room. room. We hold our little meetings and stuff. I feel very important when I talk to people here. Oh, God. <laughs> no, just kidding. Okay. I joke around. I'm like, I feel like I got to be in a suit when I sit in here. But, yeah, we just. Sometimes, sometimes we have. It, very important meetings. Sometimes we bring burritos and just eat. So. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's the conference room. It looks really cool from over there. And oh, this is our whole little. Oh, our little store. A little store area. It says the store over there. Did you see I put that up there? Mm. This is um, shirts and hats. And oh, she put this little sign up. I didn't. I didn't see this. I'm seeing this for the first time. Your phone's ringing, huh? Yeah. I don't even know where it's at. And we have our children's right in here. Yeah. 
Yeah, I'm still, I started fixing that today too. Look at the big old Jesus up there. That's really cool, huh? My brother Louie did that for us. Mm-hmm. It's like a yeah. big canvas. It is canvas, or what is it? Yeah, it's a big old canvas. Yeah, so. Yeah, it's a big old canvas. So I'm fixing that too because I'm moving the shelf in here because you are? yeah because we have a lot on our shelves. Oh, the other shelf. Yeah. Oh, you're not getting rid of it. No. And of course we have our little our little children's room. Look at this. So cute. Look at the little tiny chairs. I know they're so tiny. They have to come in here barefooted because we have all their little stuff in here. The little craft table, the little reading area <laughs> where they sit down and they read. Cool. <laughs> and look at this. This is cool. Look. It's the Ten Commandments. Do not have other gods. Do not murder. <laughs> little guns. Do not tell lies. Look, and it has a long nose. The Pinocchio. Yeah. So, all right, guys. Um, we're eventually going to get home to do the devotional. But I just figured we talked to you, so you can kind of see, see our little offering box? like the stuff we do <laughs> on Wednesday nights. That way you can understand why usually Thursday morning devotionals are shorter and we're I'm y- usually yawning. Here's our little offering look box. At our, look at our little eclectic. It looks like a little mailbox, you guys. Mm-hmm. It's our offering box. <laughs> we got that as well. We've got that for free as well. It's another so church cool. blessed us with it. I know. Another church blessed us with their offering box. It's is really cool. Yeah. It's real cute. <laughs> so we're going to... Are we going to get going pretty soon? Yeah. Can we come finish that another... Friday. By Friday. We need to come. We need to put those lights up Friday. Yeah, and and, and it's, we're getting Aaliyah Friday. Yeah. And so. then we have a water fountain. Yeah. It's a water fountain. Well, it's not working right now. Well, it's bubbling, it, remember? Oh, it is? Usually that's a water fountain coming yeah. up the stairs. So um, we're going to start closing up, and then we're going to grab our dinner, and then we'll talk to you then. We'll talk to you at dinner. You know, we so. are? Well, I mean, I want to talk to them along the way so they kind of they kind of feel like they, they're they with us, and so they can understand why I'm always yawning. Oh, I want to show. Me. I want to show them something really cool. She scared me. Okay. What are you showing? It, because me? this is going to include them. This is going to include them. Yes, it is. All right, guys. So this here, this big old board right here. Bring it down, babe, all the way down. So this big old board. Um, I actually stay right there. Talk to them for a minute. I don't know what, what I'm supposed to tell you guys, but, um, man, we've been here since one, had our Bible study, then after Bible study, we have worship practice, Okay. and I'm not even sure what time it is. Oh. So, I have this big old thing here with all kinds of pictures of, like, our individual families from everywhere. I even have Brother Felix and his family right here, look. You guys will probably see him like on YouTube. He's always commenting on YouTube as well. He's part of our family on there. So what I did is I took individual families from our church and I have more, but they're not gonna fit on here anymore. So these pictures are gonna be transferred and they're gonna be put all over this board here. Why are you your breath? Because I ran. Oh, it's just right there. I gained 20 pounds almost. Anyways, so I'm going to be putting them. They're going to be put on here sporadically on this board. So I want your guys' pictures. So that means I want you guys to email me or message me your we'll family we'll picture, and I'll print them. But I want I want pictures of our, of our families. Sorry, it's probably because oh. it's dark in here. So anyways, I want pictures of, of our families because you guys are a part of us, um, of, our, of our family. And I want to be able to put your guys' picture on here because this is going to be our picture board. Um, and I'd love to put your family on here as well. Okay. So please make sure that you guys send those pictures to us so we can include you on here, okay? All right, guys. I, the longer we stay here, the longer I got to be here. So I know, and I I'm hungry. close this thing up. So we'll talk to you and we'll grab some food right now and then uh, see you again in the cross wall. Bye.
All right, so we stopped at um, to put gas, and we usually get wings, but it was late. So. Hi, I know I look tired. They didn't have any wings. So um, the gas station here had a Denny's. So I'm getting some chicken. Chicken tenders. Yeah. Yeah. Please. Which I have two chicken tenders. Yeah. So with what? Two chicken tenders. That's all you're getting? Yeah. Oh. That's good. Yeah. That's so all we need. Just, like I said, it's late, so but we're back. So um <laughs> my eyes look so tiny. It's getting later and later, guys, so I don't even know if there's gonna be the devotional. It's ten thirty. We haven't got our food yet. I really don't feel like rendering for two hours. I can't do it anymore. How about how about we do it in the morning? I don't know. No, I'm going on a bike ride in the morning. So, we're just going to keep shooting these little videos and see what happens, guys. I think we should do it in the morning. Because they still get it, in, they still get it tomorrow. I think I should do a bike ride in the morning. Well, after your bike ride. We'll have coffee in the morning with them. All right, guys. Gotta go. Bye, guys. So, we just uh, finished our appetizer. She ordered an appetizer, I ordered an appetizer. And uh, man, my lens is dirty. See how the lights are look like uh, yeah. flares out? Clean your lens. So uh, anyways, I'll talk to you in the car. All right, guys. Um, we're back in the car. It's already 11.11. .11, so I just wanted to talk about something real quick, something we're talking about right now. Well, not what we're talking about, but Something that made me think about it is, um, I already forgot. What did I want to talk about? Well, These are the glasses I wear when I drive. <laughs> so, um, <clears throat> let me think, right? Um, well, we were talking about a few things. Me and you were sitting inside. But there was inside. something specific that wasn't even what we were talking about, but it sparked that thought in my head. Well, we were talking about enabling. We were talking about a lot of different things. We were talking about, um, oh, example. E I wanted to, exemplifying yeah. things, yeah. You know, a lot of times, even Paul says something very powerful, and obviously I'm in the car, my Bible's in the trunk, and uh, I'm not sure where the scripture is. But basically, Paul says, Paul says something, and he says that, he goes, follow Paul, follow me, and the example that he leads. And I think that is a powerful thing, because... <clears throat> anybody can can say scripture and actually there's people that are public speakers that aren't Christians that are amazing at speaking so in actuality anybody can preach too so anybody can preach anybody can quote scripture but so here's the thing Paul said he says do as I do in other words, be a living example. Because what happens, and I've said this so many times, and Sharon said something in this conversation right now, but it reminded me of something that I've said quite a bit. I've told this to people, especially the brothers in prison. You know, I used to tell them this. I'm like, you know, you can say all you want, but you got to lead by example. And if you don't have a good testimony... Do you realize that the enemy wants to destroy your testimony? You know why? Because he can't destroy scripture. He can't destroy the word. You know what he can destroy? Your testimony. Yeah. Because if he can destroy your testimony, then it takes it pacifies you and it takes away your your ability and the power to talk to others because the first thing they're going to do is say seriously you're trying to preach to me them knowing the stuff that that, that you're doing so <clears throat> you got to guard your testimony like it's the most treasured thing you have on this earth because it is because when you have an amazing testimony and you walk you're strong as your your walk is strong in the lord then you can be able to speak with conviction 
speak the words of God, speak the words of Bible, speak wisdom, speak counsel, and nobody can throw nothing back at you. Well, the reason why I said that it's because sometimes even parents, um, sometimes even as parents, we become afraid to even discipline our own children, our teenagers and our own children. And the reason why it's because even with our own children, it becomes hard because even our own children see the life that that we live by example. Live or don't live. Yeah, live or don't live. And if our children are seeing us do the things that we're not supposed to do, when it comes time to discipline our children. Or correct them. Or correct them. Because it comes to a certain point that you really don't need to discipline them. Because you, they, they grow up and you need to correct them. Mm -hmm. And speak to them with respect. And it's important that you come to them with a respect because we want to teach them respect the way the world is going to, you know, also give them that respect. Um, but we want to correct them. But the thing is, is that you cannot correct them or they won't take that correction because they don't see you living the life that you should be living. And what they're going to do is they're going to come back and they're going to be like, well, why are you telling me to do that when you're not even doing things right? Yeah. And, you know, and it's really, really hard when you try to tell your child to do something right when you're doing it wrong. Yeah. And that's hard and that hurts. <clears throat> and, you know, we, we were having a conversation right now about those type of things because, you know, I just told David... I I don't, I, don't, I never want to hear my kids try to come and tell me, well, you didn't lead by example because I I want to I want to hear I want to be able to say, well, give me that day. Tell me that day because I know that I lead by example. You know, and I know that my kids can't come and tell me, well, you know, well, mom, you did this, you know, because I know in my heart that I know that I have led by example. And I praise God that he has changed my ways, you know, because I know that he took me out of the miry clay and he created a new heart in me and that I have been able to lead by example. And I praise God and I give God all the glory for that. So we got to be very, very careful with the things that we do and how we exemplify. And that's why it's so important that we lead by, by God's example all the time. You know, like for instance, I understand, you know, if you have teenagers, I, I get it. They're going to do what they're going to do, okay? And like whether or not I cuss or not cuss or drink or don't drink or smoke weed or don't or whatever, which I, I don't, you know, but I'm just saying regardless, can you imagine if I did those things and all of a sudden one of my kids starts to do it? What right do I have to tell them not to do it? And they're like, why you do it? But here's the thing. They can't say that. You know, we have to lead by example. And, and it's like, <clears throat> it's like everything that I want my, my children to have, they're going to, they're going to reach a point where they do what they want to do. Right. Yeah. But you know what? I will not, I will not give them the, 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 the satisfaction. Yeah, the satisfaction of them ever saying, "Why well, saw you do it, Dad?" Mm -hmm. You know, no, no, you, no, because it's going to be their choice. It's going to be their choice. So my kids can't say that. You know, there's a certain color that, being where I grew up, that where I represented, and 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 the gang color and everything, I did not allow my boys to dress in that. And now they're adults, and you know what? They don't wear that color. I do know that at a certain age, they could have. They could now. My son's 22. Yeah. I can't stop him from wearing anything. But you know what? He chose not to. And I thank God for that. I really do. I thank God. But it's like, it's the example. Can you imagine? Like, I know, I know some people, man, that they don't understand why their kids are going wayward. And don't get me wrong. A lot of us can be upright Christians and our kids, my parents... My, my parents were strong in the Lord, and I still did my own thing. So don't, I'm not judging parents at all, because if that's the case, I would judge my own parents who were 
amazing parents. Yeah, but like you said, you they know? grow up and they make their own choices and everything. Yeah. But here's so, the thing. Well, I was getting oh, to a sorry, point, but I already ahead. forgot my point. Oh my god, was, really? That yeah, fast? Yeah, I was trying to get to somewhere. Mm. So it's like, anyway, what were you we going to say? I, I forgot. I really did. Oh my god, I can't believe you forget yeah. that fast. It'll come back to you right yeah, now. Yeah, and I was trying to get somewhere. And... Go ahead. Okay. I forgot too now. Yeah, you can't do that, babe. You can't do that. I'm like a train wreck. I will derail. I would, you know, like if you're in a car and like a little little rabbit runs, you kind of like, you know, you get out of the way. He forgets really and then, fast. And then you get right back on track on the road. But a train doesn't have that. It's either on the rail or it's off the rail. So when I'm like going on the rail, any little thing throws me off and train wreck so uh yeah it was gonna be a really good point too oh my god and then i forgot my point now too well then babe you gotta not stop me don't stop the train oh my god you know what happens when you step in a train you get ran over no you don't you get squashed well i don't know anyways it would have been good Maybe in it's, heaven I'll remember when we're together. Stop it. Don't say that. What do you mean? I don't want to get to heaven? Well, yeah, but well, you're then, not, it's not time for you to go to I heaven. I didn't say I was going to find out tonight. <laughs> well, you better not. So, man, it I was still such need a to good get life point. insurance on you. My wife has to understand to disrupt me. I'm, I get thrown off completely. I'm sorry. Well, it was, what if it would have changed somebody's life? <gasps> don't do that to me. You ain't not right. <laughs> you ain't cool. So you're not a cool guy. You're let me cool. actually let me recap myself. Okay. What was I saying? I don't even remember what I said. I was talking about my parents being an example. Oh, maybe this is the point. I don't know. But I see some parents. That's what I was gonna say. I remember now. This is gonna change somebody's life. Just don't say nothing. You disrupt me, and I'll forget and get derailed. Okay. I see some parents that have teenage kids and their teenage kids are not doing things right. But then I see the parent praising God and then on Saturday night they're posting themselves drinking. And then on Sunday they're in church. And then a couple weeks later they're drinking. And then they're wondering why their kids don't take them serious. Like, how can your kids take you serious? If anybody, it's like teenagers see right through us. We can't live like that, guys. Do you realize your teenager's life could depend on the example that you set? That's how serious this thing is. Is that beer really that serious? Is that joint really that serious? That your, your child's life could depend on the example that you set? That's what I was going to say. Well, that's good. You know, the thing is, as well, um, I kind of remember what I was going to say now, too. Because when our kids and when people do make their own choice, they suffer their own consequences. You know, and... It's unfortunate that sometimes everybody has to suffer their own consequences so they can learn. Yeah. You know, and, you know, our children are going to have to sometimes learn on their own as well. And, and it is unfortunate. Um, but the, that's, that's part of growing up as well. And, um, and we know that. And sometimes we do got to let them grow and we do got to let them make their own choices and everything. But let it be a choice that they make not based on you. on you let it be a choice that they make not based that they're forced to make because of the decision that you made yeah. let it be a good decision that they have good good qualities to base that decision on you know that they have that they'll, everything that they weigh that decision on is a good quality for them to be able to make that decision to be like you know well i've had such great examples so i have good, good a good 
weight or what do you, what, what would you say good things to base that decision on not a bad thing to base the decision on so I think that we got to remember that because if yeah. we give them something bad to base that decision on then that's not good because what happens is that when they make a bad decision it's not good at all because with all of that comes a lot of bad things in the world that can escalate to so many bad things and all we're doing is opening up our kids to so many bad things in this world and we're it's almost like if we're and I hate to say this but it's almost if like we're opening up the doors to the bad things of this world and we're actually opening up the enemy's door and we're saying go ahead devil have at it with our children yeah. we're inviting the enemy into our home and we're saying go ahead have at it with our children here you go do you do you want something to drink do you want to have dinner with our children do you want to have dinner with our family what what can i do can i serve my children to you on a platter mm -hmm. that's what we're doing we're giving our children to the enemy on a platter. And you know what? That's not what I want to do. So we need to be very, very careful. And there was, there's a book called Satan, You Can't Have My Children. That's a good book. You guys should read it. I don't know who wrote it, but mm -hmm. I read it many, many years ago. It's called Satan, You Can't Have My Children. Yes. Oh, <laughs> that's a huge earthquake. But anyway, so, Satan, you can't have my children. Look it up, you guys. It's a good book. I want to end it off with this. And kind of, I want to take something Sharon just said and say it in a little different way, a little more raw. Oh, man. Okay. How many of you will let a molester into your home? A rapist? A murderer? A pimp? A drug dealer? How many of you would let them in your home and hang out in your children's room? I don't think anybody would. Ever. No. I bet you the fathers that are listening to this that have daughters, you're getting mad right now just at the thought. Yeah. Who do you think is behind the rapist, the molester, the drug dealer, the murderer? It's the enemy. And mothers, what would you do to protect your children? You know, I'll tell you one thing, what my mom almost did, you know, my mom almost, my mom almost killed to protect me when that happened to me. And, you know, I praise God that my mom didn't hurt anybody, but my mom was like that lion when she had to try to protect me from what happened to me when I was a little girl. And I know that she would do it all again if she could. Because that's what a parent does to protect their children. Uh, the, other, the other day I was driving by a liquor store and it's funny because it said uh, wine, beer, and spirits. <laughs> oh, man. Spirits. Hmm. You know that's what they call alcohol? Spirits. Yeah. Think about that one. Why is that? Because the very one, so many parents wouldn't let those people into their home. But if you're doing those things, you're the very one letting them in your home. I refuse to let the enemy take my kids. Everything the world wants to do is destroy our kids. And the last thing I'm going to do is let it be because of me. Or let it be because of us. So let's lead by example. Before you preach to your kids, lead by example. Because that is the most powerful thing you could give them. That is the most powerful thing my mom and dad ever gave me. The only reason that you even hear this man that I am right now is not because of some preacher, not because of some evangelist, it's because of the example that my father set when he accepted Christ when I was eight years old. He was an alcoholic and he surrendered his life to the Lord, never drank alcohol and said, this as for me and my house, we're going to serve God in this house. And it's still like that to this day. 
you know, and that's the best thing anybody's ever done for me. Best, better than Bible college, better than anything. The best thing that's ever been done for me was the example that my dad said. Never preached a sermon in his life, but he was my example. And, of, then, and then you have some that alcohol destroyed, like alcohol destroyed. Yeah. Alcohol tried to destroy my life, you yeah. know. You know, it, my dad was an alcoholic and... You know? and, and somebody might hear say well that's nice you had a dad like that and maybe you had a horrible dad but you know what what about your kids you're that dad now yeah. start the generation now amen So make the change you guys you know I know that today was all a little choppy and we did a lot of everything but I think it was really meant for us to be able to come and sit down because after we had our small, I had, you know, just two little bites of something and he had, you know, his, his few bites of, of, of his food. But we actually spent some time actually here and we got to sit down and we talk and that's what we do a lot. We, we sometimes we just sit here and we talk. But this is what we spoke about, what was in our heart and we started speaking about things and God just started, you know, ministering to us about being an example and this is what we just started talking about right now. We wanted to share this with you guys. So I, I, I just thank you, Lord, for allowing us to be able to share this with you, what was in our heart and what he gave us to share with you, because I think it was something that needed to be shared. Yeah. And I'm, I just praise God that he always gives us something to be able to share with our family. I was just telling her there's not going to be a devotional tonight because there's yeah. no way. It's 1131. We're 30 minutes away from home. We would have done a devotional at 12. Honestly, by the time we got in, settled in, set up the light, set up the phone. But God had a different plan. And then render. It wasn't going to happen. I was telling her. I said, I'm sorry. It's too late. I, I can't. I'm, I, I'm not going to do a devotional tonight. And um, But being here now recording this, I can let it render as we drive home. So I will be able to upload this and you guys get a devotional. Don't have any crosses behind. Where's the cross? Oh, it's in the back. Oh, okay. So anyways, guys, um, have a good... Good morning. Yeah, a good Thursday, right? Yeah. Yeah, good Thursday morning. God bless you. I hope you got something out of this. Be an example. Lead by example. If you don't have children, it still pertains to you. Because be an example to your co-workers, to your family, to your siblings, to your friends, to your spouse. You still have somebody to be an example for. If your kids are already grown, you can still be an example to them. I, yeah. It's exemplify Jesus, identify Jesus. Yeah. Woo. So my hand is completely numb holding this phone. <laughs> I can't feel my fingers. So, all right, guys. Bye. Bye. We love you guys.